My name's Alex Bruce Farmer. I'm the group uh, PM for end user experience here at Thousand Eyes Cisco. So just to kick us off, um, I'm going to give us a quick intro um, into Thousand Eyes um, and just to sort of frame the problem a little bit. So as we all know, there's been a huge shift. Um, cloud is the new data center. I remember back when I started my career, I loved going to the data center. I loved going and seeing the flashing lights, switch the lights off in that in, in those big data um, data center rooms. And it was just kind of this really amazing thing to experience. But those days are long gone. SaaS is now our new application stack. And now, since for, for the last two years, home is now the new office. And that's really transformed a lot about how we work. So now the internet is really the new network. So with all of these shifts, one of the things that's become even more important is digital experience. But the challenge with this move to cloud-based solutions is that we have so much less control than we ever did before. So if we look at things like moving to hybrid work, there are so many different touch points, there's so many different things to go wrong. I mean, I know that I experienced um, my own issues when, when I started working from home, my wife was at home, you know, our, our, our small child was running around, there was, there was a lot that we had to deal with. And there are so many different areas of things to go wrong. Is it the Wi-Fi? Is it the VPN? Et cetera, et cetera. One of the things I just want to frame and go back to is that real world journey that we used to experience and we used to know was sitting in a branch office, enterprise, uh, enterprise WAN using good old MPLS P1s, L3 VPNs, you name it. But now that's really, really changed. Now we don't have this sort of ability to own the end to end application. We don't have the ability really to end that end, to own the end to end journey anymore. So if we look at hybrid work today, and we look at the way that our offices are now connected and sort of continuing on from, um, from the talk about SD-WAN, things are very, very different. If we look at this kind of web that we have, there are so many more touch points. You know, we have the hybrid work and the SD-WAN environments. We have then a big chunk of the internet, which is a very, very much an unknown entity. It's dynamic, it changes, it moves. There's congestion, there's DDoS attacks. There's so many different things that happen that you just don't really know about and can't really get true visibility into. And then finally, once you hit your SaaS vendor like Salesforce, you're into their network, you're into their data center. And a lot of that visibility becomes very, very difficult to understand and identify. So if we look a little bit deeper into you know, what, what, we, um, what we coin at uh, Thousand Eyes as the digital supply chain, appreciate it as a bit of a buzzword, but ultimately it gives, it gives a good reflection as to how many different touch points there are. So, you know, with a remote worker, I'm I'm in the Thousand Eyes office today. I'm on Wi-Fi. Um, I've you know authenticated to get onto and um, the Wi-Fi. I'm now on my VPN. We've got you know various proxies, various security capabilities. We've got zero trust, all of those different things. And I barely got to the application that I want to get access to. So there are so many, so many things that can essentially go wrong. So one of the things at Thousand Eyes that we want to do is give people the ability to have a common operational language between teams. So they can understand, improve and see the digital experience at each touch point. So one of the things that was, was just mentioned in the previous talk is that, you know, there are different teams in, in an organization. Each one of those teams wants to manage and wants to touch different things. And one of the things that we really want to make sure is understood is that the network team, the security teams, InfoSec, application teams, collaboration teams, workplace teams, all of those different teams are looking at the same data but ultimately they often want to look at that same data in a completely different way because they, they're looking to solve different problems. So what Thousand Eyes can do and what Thousand Eyes can bring to the table is that ability to bring you visibility where it matters. So what we look at doing is providing you that coverage across you know, routing, whether it's BGP or across the network. We then give you visibility into things like the network itself from a layer two perspective, the, the L2 via um, L2 point-to-point -point connections between each of your routers and switches um, using things like SNMP. We also look into critical things like DNS. DNS is so important, and I think it's one of those really underestimated pieces of the puzzle that often goes wrong. I mean, when we've seen some outages through, through this year, there's been some critical ones that have been DNS related, which have actually ended up on rolling into things like a BGP issue, for example. But without DNS, there isn't that phone book, there isn't that ability for www.cisco.com to be resolved to go to an actual website. And most importantly, as we're now using, you know, web and SaaS based applications, our private DNS servers are not necessarily that important anymore. 
we're now using cloud-based services, which have got additional security that help us with things like phishing attacks, um, which help with, with things like man in the middle attacks and everything else. And that means that there are just so many more vantage points than we ever had before. So what Thousand Eyes looks to do is take all of that data that we, that we collect and we drive some correlation of that data. We give you great visualization into how and where potentially those issues are. And then ultimately look at how we can help you identify the root cause of those issues as quickly as possible. The aim really for us at Thousand Eyes is to make sure that you can identify and get that mean time to identification and mean time to resolution down to the smallest, smallest number possible. Time is money, especially when there's an outage. One of the biggest questions that you need to answer as quickly as possible is, is it us? Is this outage us or is it someone else? And if it's someone else, who is it? And as we saw on that on on the on the slide with the digital supply chain, there are so many different touch points and so many different parts of the puzzle that can go wrong. And our IT teams have now had to evolve from being, you know, core core technical people to also managing vendors and understanding how to manage things like SLAs. Um, and that's really being driven down through that CIO team. When we look at what is generated from the data, we need to make sure that we turn it into something actionable. So what we do is we, we provide you a connected ecosystem. So that gives you the ability to integrate into other platforms. Our APIs and integrations are super, super tight. So let's say that you're setting up some alerting um, and you need to know when a specific connection has got you know, bad packet loss for in the last three minutes or something, there's been some bad packet loss and you need to understand that. We can then push alerts into things like PagerDuty, push something into service now for you to raise a, a, raise a service test query or whatever it may be. But the critical thing is we can also give you those dashboards and reports that your critical teams need. And as I mentioned before, we want to make sure that the data that we're providing you is useful for multiple teams and not just one single team within your organization. So one of the things that I'll show um, shortly in, a, in, a, in the demo and that I'll be showing at the end is that we want to make sure that the data that you can provide and generate from, say, a report or maybe from our views can actually be given to another team or even a third party provider to understand and explain where an outage is. I hear some great, great success stories from our customers where they've been working with some big vendor and they've been giving them thousand eyes, um, what we call share links over and over and over again. And in the end, that vendor came to us and said, hey, look, we keep getting these share links in. I think we need to get some visibility and understand you know, where these problems are. And we need to be identifying before our customers come and tell us about them. And because that's the bit that degrades trust. And that's the real core thing about what thousand eyes can do. So, you know, what are we? Who are we at Thousand Eyes? So Thousand Eyes have three core parts to our product line. We have internet and WAN visibility. So that's the piece where we're monitoring BGP, we're monitoring your network, we're going down into the SNMP layer, we're looking at all of those different touch points in a, in a branch office or in an enterprise network. The great thing about internet and WAN visibility is we can also dig deeper into applications as well. So one of the parts of our um, portfolio is something called browser synthetics, which allows you to run what we call a transaction test, which gives you the ability to simulate what a user would do with something like Office 365. So for example, you build a step-by-step um, -step script of logging into Office 365, understanding whether there's been an outage um, with a particular part of the application. So user logs in, they do two-factor authentication, they potentially go in and upload a file and download a file to OneDrive or SharePoint. With all of those touch points, there are actually about 10, 15 different things that could potentially go wrong. And we give you visibility into each one of those touch points. So it gives you a phenomenal baseline for when your end users come to you and say, oh my God, you know, this is, this is going wrong or I've got this problem. So it's a really, really critical way of being able to understand that. One of the things that's become really, really important over the last two years is getting better visibility into end user experience. So our endpoint agent, which is what we're here to talk about today, is, is, a, is the ability to get, give your IT teams and your organizations a brand new vantage point that they never had before. No one really likes being in a position where IT has to schedule a time to remote desktop into your machine and, and start poking around and you know, running trace routes and all that kind of thing. Because the problems that we all, all have often a transient, they'll come along, they'll go away. By the time IT's got there, it's disappeared. One of the things that drives me absolutely crazy is when I have a problem, I know I've got a problem. I call IT, they come along, they look in, they say, yep, there's no problem here. It's, it's definitely, you know, it, it's gone away. It's, it's sold itself, you know, turn it off and on again, and it's all good. But actually that, that, those problems come back and, um, again and again and again, and there's always something behind the scenes that's causing that issue. 
And what we can do with our endpoint agent is give you that visibility and give you that vantage point into an end user's device that you've never, the IT teams have really never had before. Tying this all together, we also have Internet Insights. And Internet Insights is, is a phenomenal tool which brings together all of the data that Thousand Eyes collects through our Internet and WAN visibility um, uh, cloud and enterprise agents. And what it does is it, is it allows us to identify outages on the internet. So let's say there's a network level outage in a, in a big backbone like level three, um, or let's say Tartar Communications or whoever it may be. And we can highlight that and then notify our customers um, through the Thousandized um, application to tell them that there's been an issue. One of the new things that we've also added recently is application insights as well. So the app insights give you, a, give you the ability to understand whether there's a degradation in an application. So when there was that big outage with Facebook earlier, um, in, in, you know, not too long ago, one of the things that we saw is that we saw the application start failing. But then we also saw that step-by-step -step motion of how there was that cascading failure as, as the network seemed to be being torn down. And then we were able to quickly identify that it was a BGP withdrawal issue. No one else was able to give that visibility and we were able to give you the, the actual factual data of why there was an issue and why there was an outage. There were so many different stories happening of, oh, you know, this um, uh, cloud provider has gone down or that cloud provider has gone down. And, and, and because everybody has some kind of integration with Facebook on consumer based websites, there were so many different things that were going on and so many different, you know, noise that was really causing a lot of confusion. So with all of these things together, we give our customers a really phenomenal ability to share the op this common operational language across different teams. So they're all using that same technology. They're all looking at the, the, the same kind of data displayed in the same way, but tuned for the type of problems that they're looking to solve. So coming back to this again, is it the Wi-Fi? Is it your home network? Is it the ISP? Is it security as a service? There are so many different touch points, so many different things that can go wrong. And Thousand Eyes endpoint agent on the end user monitoring side is going to give our customers the visibility into being able to identify these problems quickly and efficiently. So quick explanation about what the endpoint agent is, how it works. So within the endpoint agent, we have three core components. We have um, what we call user sessions, which is a browser extension, which is, uh, which is um, installed into Chrome or Edge. And this gives IT teams the ability to monitor SaaS-based applications. This gives them um, uh, our customers the ability to identify when there's you know, potentially a third-party um, uh, third application or resource that's, that's failing to load. We also then have our user sessions data from the network perspective giving that full end-to-end -end visibility between the user, their network, their Wi-Fi, that last mile across their ISP, all the way across the internet through out into that application's own network, right directly to an IP address, allowing you to understand where there may be a jump in latency, understanding where there may be a failure, understanding where there may be issues. And then we give you more in-depth information into things like the, um, you know, the wireless network, whether you're wired, VPN and proxy configurations, all that kind of thing. And then finally, one of the things that we really set out when we built the, the endpoint agent, which is something that Thousand Eyes has had um, for about four or five years now, was we wanted to make sure it was lightweight. We didn't want to be one of these agents that sat there and was a big resource hog. So we have built the, the whole thing in C++. It uses a very, very tiny amount of system resources, We're talking about less than 1% of the CPU, tiny, tiny double digits amount of um, megabytes of, of memory, and a very, very small footprint in terms of um, disk space as well. We automatically update the client via the cloud, so it really lessens that friction on IT having to manage and understand how those updates work. For our bigger enterprise customers, because we do have customers within finance, within banking, within healthcare, they have their own processes, so obviously we can work with them to either slow down or provide them a great framework so they can do testing and sandboxing on the updates before they go live. And as I, as I mentioned earlier on, we have the browser extensions for Chrome, Edge, and IE. The deployment is super, super straightforward. For smaller organizations, we provide um, an MSI and a zip, which can be downloaded directly from our dashboard. Auto registers without, um, without the end user having to do very much to get it up and running. But also for our larger customers who have SCCM and doing GPO-based deployments, um, we, can, we can give them the enablement that they need to get mass deployment done. And again, registration is super, super easy. 
how do we put a limit on how much visibility do we provide? Especially because you're putting an endpoint on, oh, sorry, an agent on an endpoint. So what about yeah, well, yeah. users and their information and all that drama behind it? We give IT teams a huge amount of control as to what they can monitor and what they what they can't monitor. And the IT teams make that make that determination. So business critical applications are something that IT need to monitor. For situations where you have high level execs, perhaps that need some need to stay anonymous. Um, we have uh, plenty of role based access controls to anonymize data or um, make sure it's obfuscated. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's hidden. You said this the agent's been around for like five years now. Is that did yeah, I hear that right. correctly? Oh, that's okay. correct. Yeah. Um, and so maybe I missed it here that I was I was thinking this agent was new. What um, I missed what new features you're are there new features being introduced today that you're talking about? That, yes, that absolutely. Happened? Okay, I guess that's yeah, the absolutely. part I've missed. Yeah, no problem. I mean, it's it's uh, generally this was a, an overall introduction into into the end user monitoring side and the endpoint agent. Um, it's the first time I've uh, I've addressed you all as a team. Um, so ge generally, I wanted to make sure that we kind of got into the um, into the high level of what what Thousand Eyes had to offer, um, and then jumping down more into the actual product itself because I think that's going to likely drive a lot more questions. This is the Thousand Eyes um, dashboard. Um, what I'm going to show today is just kind of a quick run through as to you know, what our users would see on, our, on an average day, what they would um, look to do, what they would drive through. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, depending on time, I'm going to go and jump into a couple of example demos of you know, where, where issues have happened before and, and where you know, diagnostics have, have happened and how we've been able to identify those issues. So one of the new, one of the new capabilities that we released um, very recently, and this was sort of driven really from the feedback that we had from our customers, was that the, the our, our views capability, which we'll see in a moment, is so unbelievably powerful. It has the ability to slice and dice data. You can filter it. You can drill down. You can look at all of the different metrics that you that you would ever ever need to solve a problem. But often for IT teams and and frontline um, service desks, sometimes that's a little bit too much information, and and it can allow them to kind of go off the beaten track and and get a little bit lost, which has the adverse effect of increasing that mean time to identification, mean time to resolution. So one of the things that we, we've uh, just launched over in the last sort of three to six months or so is our new agent view, which is what we're seeing today. So this new agent view is the ability to see all of the metrics for all, um, an end user's device all in a single pane of glass. So as I mentioned earlier on, there are a number of different types of tests that we, uh, that we perform on a user's device, and that's something that the IT team would control. This is a snapshot of my um, my own laptop that I'm running this presentation from today. Um, so what we can see here is a, is a good drill down. The, the funny thing is I hadn't looked at my own device um, in, in the last week or so. Um, but what I actually interestingly identified is that clearly my Wi-Fi had some kind of wobbly at home um, some time ago because for some reason um, my signal quality completely dropped off the uh, dropped off um, dropped off a cliff um, and I kind of had a bit of a, a decrease in signal quality. So I think I might have like a Wi-Fi issue at home. I've got a small place. It's only you know, 12, 1300 square foot or so. And so for me, I probably wouldn't realize if I dropped off from one access point to another. But what we can see is I did have an increase in things like gateway um, gateway loss that could could have potentially been impacting my, um, my, uh, my digital experience. One of the things that we can do here is we can also um, blow out and add lots and lots of additional metrics here. And the critical thing about this view and what we wanted to drive and provide IT teams was to be able to see all of these metrics side by side, to be able to identify if there were any issues. Because looking at this within about 10 or 15 seconds, you can identify if there's anything wrong or there's something strange going on. And we could see that immediately from you know, my link speed dropping, my signal quality dropping, and then having an increase in, in loss, and then that then continuing and then disappearing here when I finally got over to the US. Um, so it's quite an interesting, interesting view to have a look at. One of the other components that we have within Thousand Eyes is the ability to run something called a scheduled test. Now, this is a synthetic test that can either be an ICMP-based test or it can be a TCP-based test. And what we found is that a lot of enterprise networks block ICMP, for example, on what we call the underlay. Um, so that's you know between the user and a VPN gateway. And then they allow ICMP in, in the overlay, which is the enterprise, um, so within the enterprise network post the VPN gateway or the VPN head end. So one of the things that we introduced was the, the ability for customers to choose how tests were then performed. 
So what we have here is a number of tests that my agent has been, confi uh, been be configured to test against. So things like Cisco WebEx, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, Salesforce, Okta, all of the sort of business critical applications um, that you know, our SEs um, are looking to monitor as well as our IT team are looking to monitor. Mm -hmm. Um, and then going down into more and more detail about things like, um, you know, what different what different websites um, have I been um, visiting that our IT team really care about that are important that they want to make sure are operating as as best they can be um, to make sure I'm able to do my job. Is it only based on ICMP? Do you send something like an HTTP request and then get a 200 message? Okay, which kind of proves sorry proves my apologies? Can you get then? For the system to use, because in some in some cases, ICMP might not be enough. Yes, absolutely. So, um, just just jumping into um, to a quick example here, um, I'm running an HTTP server test. So, what we do is we have a, a, a essentially curl that's um, deployed um, within our agent for what we call a scheduled test, um, and then what we're doing is we're doing that exact thing. We are pulling an HTTP request, understanding how quickly that came in terms of responding, a little bit about redirects, and then specifically the target IP address. So we can see and, and validate things like uptime and making sure that things are um, working as expected. And then, as I mentioned, one of the things that we can also do is provide you that end-to-end -end visibility into how well the network is actually performing. So um, if we have a look here, um, you know, this was me connected um, to the Thousand Eyes guest network here where I am going through coaching communications level three in Salesforce. One of the things I did for this demo was I connected to our corporate VPN because I wanted to also give you that visibility into that complete digital supply chain, being able to see and identify and understand the connection between where I am within the Thousand Eyes office all the way through to the VPN head end, which we call the underlay, and then visibility onward from my VPN gateway through to the IP address that I would be hitting um, on Salesforce's network. So from this, I can identify exactly whether there would be any issues um, with my connection between those two points um, and ultimately identify whether that problem is, is us or whether it's a, a service provider or whether it's Salesforce themselves. How would you, so how does this actually work? Like where are the, where are the agents installed? How do you actually provide such granular visibility? Where, where is everything located when you're doing this? Thousand Eyes has um, sort of three deployment models. We have our enterprise agents, which are installed within um, within a, a cloud environment or a private data center or at a branch office, or actually now within Cisco uh, Nexus and ISRs. We also then have um, the uh, the cloud agents, which are essentially enterprise agents that we manage and we run within the cloud. But what we're looking at today is the endpoint agents, and these agents are directly installed on an end user's device, whether it's a Windows or a Mac device. And these are generally installed on all of the um, devices within an organization, giving them that, that um, direct vantage point. Okay, so they're directly installed on end user devices. So if, if we're talking like a branch office or something, every single person working there has an agent installed in their device. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can this cause any problems with regard to, I don't know, like you can't control everybody in an office, right? Like, can this cause any issues with the endpoints functioning properly? I mean, do we know that things are going to be 100% accurate with regards to the insights we get from the end user experience? When we're building out the endpoint agent, we're making sure that we are giving our customers the right guidance on doing a deployment in a, in a giant branch office. Um, obviously, we, we, do, we, we can have uh, we can do tests every minute, every two minutes, every five minutes, 30 minutes, et cetera. So when customers are deploying Thousand Eyes, um, we, may, we, we give them some help into understanding what kind of applications they're monitoring. So for example, with Salesforce, you, you don't generally need a test to be run every minute. But if you're monitoring something like WebEx or um, something like a VoIP client or a, or a VoIP platform, that's something you absolutely need um, telemetry to look into. So from, from that perspective, we send out a very, very small amount of bandwidth um, or, or number of packets anyway, um, just enough for us to be able to get the network telemetry that we need. So we have this deployed in organizations with you know, 40, plus thousand, um, 40, 40 plus thousand users and we, we don't have any issues at all um, in that size deployment. Um, I wanna just jump into you know, an example, um, few, few problems that we've, uh, that we've seen in the, uh, from, from our customers and from our own teams in the field. So first one, we we had a um, we had an uh, an all hands where we were all in a all in a hotel, um, and everybody was complaining bitterly about how bad the the Wi-Fi was, um, and then 
you know, it took no time at all for the team to identify that actually they were having problems with the Wi-Fi itself. So it seemed like there was a congestion issue. And just immediately, just opening up Thousand Eyes and just looking at the the, the loss and the latency um, part of views, we were able to see exactly what had happened and exactly where the problem was and how it was cascading through um, through the networks all the way to the end application. So one of the things that we can do with with Thousand Eyes is that if we're if we're working within this views aspect here and there is an issue, we can we can create a snapshot. So Thousand Eyes provides you a 30 day retention in terms of data. So it gives you a really good idea if there are any particular issues or trends. But there are sometimes situations where you need to share that data with someone else. So again, this is this is one of those share links. As you can see, this was you know this was made back in in 2019 um, when when we had an event. So again, this is a really nice way of being able to identify quickly where the issues were, were, how many of our users were, were affected, um, and potentially where you needed to go and have a conversation with the hotel and say, hey, we, we know that there's an issue with your Wi-Fi. We need to get this resolved. You know, we're a tech company. We're hosting, hosting an event here. Um, it needs to work. One of the sort of more interesting issues that we have um, and that we try and the IT teams have had to identify and deal with is situations wh which are a little bit um, different. So in this scenario here, what we found is, you know, this this user in particular, um, you know, had an issue as one of actually our own Thousand Eyes employees. We turned this one actually into a demo. And so what we actually found is that this user in particular, um, you know, had a huge spike in, in latency um, and they really were struggling to understand what was going on. So, you know, they wrote into IT, said, like, I'm ha hey, I'm having really, really weird connectivity issues. Can you try and help me out and figure out what's going on? So what the team did was they, they had a look, they immediately identified that there was a huge spike in latency coming out from, um, from their, their Wi-Fi out through to their um, sort of first hop of their ISP. So initially we know that it's gonna be an internal issue within their, within their infrastructure. So the great thing is that can take us straight through into what we call our network access area. And that's where we can start having a look and poking around and seeing what's going on. So what we could see, in, um, you know, immediately is, you know, a huge amount of, of gateway loss. So something very, very strange. So what we can do is start digging into things like signal quality, because we clearly know it's a local issue. And what we can see here is there is a, a significant degradation in signal quality. 40 or 50% is, is not a great signal quality, um, especially if you're running at 802.11n. So from here, our team was able to identify that they thought it was pretty weird that this person who was supposed to be working from home actually was on their guest Wi-Fi. So when we told them about that, well, they're like, oh, yeah, I mean, our guest Wi-Fi is only downstairs in, in our house because that's, you know, where, where the guests are. So what they did is after identifying that, they switched over to their proper, proper wireless access point, um, i.e. They're not their guest one. And then everything came back to, uh, everything came back to life. They had great signal quality. Um, a lot of their, you know, latency issues had, had all gone away. Um, and, you know, they, they were back to that, that normal low latency that they had expected.